All right, welcome back to the New Equity Network show. Michael Yorby, your host, broadcasting to you live on 1160 AM KVCE, DFW's Business Authority. My guest this segment, Chris Walker, General Manager, Heliospectra. And uh, Chris is uh, been in, in, excuse me, in this industry, and uh, Heliospectra does something that's, uh, well, really, they're a world leader in, in their industry sector. Glad to have you on the show, Chris. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Uh, the time and the opportunity. My pleasure. All right, Chris, j- give our audience just a little background on you, what you're doing with the U.S. operations. This is an international company, and uh, what Heliospectra does for, for our listening audience. And don't forget your stock symbols. I'd be happy to. Uh, HLSPY is the OTC symbol. H-E-L-I-O is the NASDAQ symbol in Sweden. So uh, Heliospectra is a Swedish company. We're focused on plant sciences and specifically uh, light and the science of light as it relates to developing products for uh, controlled environmental agriculture. I was hired by the company about four years ago to help them translate their, their value into the American markets. And since then, we've commercialized a product that replaces the current terribly inefficient and archaic lamp that's seen in most greenhouses and indoor growing facilities. So uh, this is the first commercial appropriate non-high pressure sodium or high intensity discharge lamp that is viable for greenhouse and, and indoor growing. It's a pretty exciting opportunity. I can see that because right there, big and bold on the home page of your website says save fifty percent or more on your energy bill. And if you've got a large operation, that's an amazing number. How is it that you're able to do that? High intensity discharge lamps, the ones you see in in large operations today, are just simply inefficient. And, and this is science. This is math. These are measurable numbers. This is a translation of electricity out of the wall and photons into the canopy. LED is simply more efficient. Other alternative lighting is just more efficient than HID. It's really just a matter of uh, engineering the lamp the right way so that you can throw the same amount of energy deep into the canopy of a plant uh, in an operation that a high-intensity high discharge lamp can, can throw. And LED has finally arrived. So, we, you know, this is just rhetoric. Uh, that fifty percent is real. You actually can save a significant amount of money on your electricity charge. Now you've got some some advanced technology. It's not just in in the light itself. Let's let's walk through that because if you're a world leader, you have have really made some advancements. You must have some patents to your name, and uh, some some um, really some some long reaching sales uh, prospects that have already been brought into the fold. Let's, let's talk about that. Sure. Um, our, our, our primary, uh, 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 patent catalog is wrapped around a concept we call biofeedback. And that's not anything, that isn't anything new in terms of, uh, the, 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 the idea of, uh, plants giving us information. Um, what we've done is begun to build a system around, a proprietary algorithm where we can read plants and their stress levels based on light. So when we feed plants a specific light spectrum or a specific intensity or what we call a light recipe, we can actually read real time whether or not the plant likes it or if it's stressed to a degree that it won't be healthy or vice versa. Uh, so companies that are involved in species-specific growing, meaning they're doing something that's mission critical for, say, a grocery store or some crop that if they were to lose the crop or if they were to spend more energy or electricity on the crop, they would be shaving dollars out of their out of their revenue stream. So uh, this is the science of light is really at the forefront of this of this cutting edge uh, idea of, of finally harnessing um, the spectrum and, and intensity in a way that isn't just a blunt, static uh, light source simply delivering light, un, an, an unknown, what we call essentially dirty light, to the, to the plant. Uh, we're actually jumping into the spectrum and saying, what is it that the plant is actually reacting to? So 
large operations that that are, like I said, mission critical or, uh, you know, basically businesses where uh, revenue is, is derived specifically from how efficiently you can grow a plant, uh, the, the, these operations are seeing that, in fact, what they've built uh, does not include uh, a technology, a lighting technology that is essentially intelligent or able to really do anything besides deliver just a very blunt, inefficient light source. Let's talk about the geographical location of your customer base. Uh, open that up. Sure. Uh, the company is located in Gothenburg, Sweden, so we focused there originally in uh, Northern Europe um, in that we have you know, a really rich tradition around greenhouse growing. Uh, the winters are dark, so to, uh, to be able to use light in a way that allows us to deliver food and, and, and fruit, fruit, fruit and vegetables all year round, uh, that that that's a that's a science in and of itself. So it's something that the that that Northern Europe has been mastering and focused on for several decades. Um, you know the rich tradition around uh, growing in Holland uh, is something that that the cannabis industry knows quite well. Um, so our customer base really started there, but we've blossomed beyond that. Uh, we have customers all over Europe. And we have customers all over North America at this point. And as of just recently, we've begun an, a really interesting pro, uh, project that your viewers can read about in our in our PR uh, stream in Qatar. What is it? Tell or Qatar, I should say. Qatar. What, tell me, <laughs> what sure. are you doing? I, I never know how to pronounce the country's name. But I'm sure I'm butchering it. That's okay. What, what are you doing in, in Qatar or Qatar? <laughs> uh, we're working with this uh, this program that involves. Uh, again, growing plants in an environment where uh, otherwise you are you're water starved or it's an, there's an extreme temperature issue. Uh, this this is a country saying we need to feed our we need to grow our own food and feed our people with our own resources versus import and be charged or be beholden to some other ag market. So it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating opportunity to get in on the ground floor of a market that's really just beginning. And countries, uh, companies, um, investors that see what we're doing understand how mission-critical delivering more efficient light is going to become today and into the future. It simply is an, a, an, a massive amount uh, of electricity demand um, just as a as a side note, just to kind of show your your listeners how incredible, incredibly inefficient the current system is, the current lamp system is. There's a report that they can look up that's written by a gentleman by the name of Dr. Mills out of the Lawrence Livermore Labs in Berkeley, really one of the foremost economist uh, think tanks in in the world, where he basically says we had no idea how large the demand was. In fact. Uh, for indoor cannabis growing, uh, a, a conservative estimate would be somewhere around 1% of the entire electricity grid in the United States. And he also estimates that that number is somewhere between 3 and 4% of the entire grid in California. So if we can cut that number down by 20, 30, 40, much less 50%, that, that step is it's monumental. It's game-changing. Yeah, I'll say it is. Our, the, the the sources for your energy, and we have a minute left here, but the sources for your energy, right now I'm sure they're traditional, they're coming from a power plant, but uh, uh, are you also thinking about being able to take the normal alternative energy sources, solar, wind, so on, and be able to use those to further reduce the carbon footprint by with the efficiency of these lights? Well, our, our customers certainly are. We just acquired a new customer, a large one, that'll, that will install uh, at least 200 lamps in the coming couple months here, and he's building uh, a large greenhouse operation that runs primarily on solar and um, um, uh, a battery farm that he's, that he's working on. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, so, so our customers certainly are. Um, and, and if someone can plug our lamp into something that uses less electricity, uh, you know, they, they will become a, a, a 
not just a customer, but really a partner. We'll, we'll highlight that work. I'm speaking with Chris Walker, general manager uh, in the USA division, Heliospectra, symbol on the OTC HLSPY, and on the NASDAQ in Sweden, H-E-L-I-O, heliospectra.com. All right, Chris, when we were on the other segment, the, the last segment we were talking about, you gave a great description of the energy cost savings and where the, the areas that you're expanding to. Let's one of the things that you brought up on the last segment was the uh, cannabis industry. It's huge. You mentioned it's four percent of the power grid uh, in um, California, one percent overall throughout the United States. That's a big business. It's and, and it looks to get bigger, not just here, but abroad. Let's let's talk about the commoditization of the cannabis uh, industry sector. What does that look like? Uh, much like any other product that's grown in the ground or is available for nearly anybody to enter the market uh, with just simply by having the resources to, to grow a plant or, or mine something, uh, it is a commodity. And currently it sits in these silos we call states or countries, uh, and that's a legal boundary that, uh, that we've created you know, for this plant. Um, what will happen as, as time passes is is commoditization in these silos, and then when the feds uh, deschedule the plant, it will begin to commoditize across the entire country, much less the entire world. Um, it's simply a, a supply and demand issue. There will be way too much produced, and I'm not talking about five years from now. I'm talking about in the next 12 to 18 months. I'm I'm sitting personally sitting in front of blueprints that are simply too large for the, the, for the, the current uh, demand. Um, I think the market is really creative and will find some very interesting places to put, uh, put byproducts, specifically oil. Um, but the, the, the demand as it relates to uh, heliospectra and that commoditization, mm-hmm. um, what that equates to for our customers is the ability to grow plants for uh, for, for, for less. They, they can simply reduce their, their cost of goods sold uh, by reducing the amount of electricity that, that, their, that their operations demand. And the one place where they can control that is through the purchasing of alternative lighting um, and, to a lesser degree, uh, the HVAC that, that is, uh, that's needed in these, in these operations. Um, so that, that's a place where our customers will be able to compete to, on, a, on a higher level. They'll be able to sell product at the at the either uh, static price or the reduced price that's coming in the cannabis market, um, simply because there's still revenue left on the table for them. Do you see your industry sector being able to produce, eventually produce enough produce? Because that's really what you're growing, produce enough produce Mm -hmm. where some of these countries, like you mentioned, Qatar, uh, are going to be able to um, use this as a a viable revenue stream for export of of foods. Uh, They will be able to produce enough food, enough produce, assuming they build their operations cor- correctly and, and, and employ uh, a system of building that allows them to flex with technology. Mm-hmm. For instance, our lamp is IP controlled via software, right? There's an IP address in every lamp. We can control every lamp, build light recipes that are specific to the species. So if a company or a country wants to invest in a technology that allows them to grow very specific food, it only makes sense that their operation matches that. And by providing the plant the right light, they're not using more electricity than they need to, thereby reducing the resources needed to grow the plant. Um, That's a tall order. Uh, So I think there will be companies and countries that get it, They'll move forward aggressively into uh, building these operations the right way, and they'll use technology in a way that allows them to survive. Uh, Then there will be those that don't, and I see plenty of that happening in the market. So we call that retrofit uh, and or the secondary selling market. So there's two places where we sell our lamps. One is into new construction, 
and that's clearly where we where we uh, where we shine, and that we were able to sit in front of the the engineers while they're planning these and uh, these these operations on paper. Um, <clears throat> but one thing that we saw pretty early on was this this wave of uh, first wave of of, of ag tech. Uh, large indoor operations being built, and the need to provide them with a, with a lamp that they can actually retrofit their current uh, operation with without having to rebuild everything. So when you look at our lamp, it actually looks like, uh, in many ways, it looks like the current lamp that's on the on the in the in the in the grow op. Uh, in that there's duct work on either side of it, so you can just simply take the old lamp out and put our lamp in. Without having to redo a lot of your your uh, interior uh, hardware. What about the quality of the food? Uh, I mean, this is this is a lamp, and there's more to to growing food than than just lighting. Although it, from what you're telling me about, there's a lot more to the lighting and uh, for for growing the food and using your your proprietary algorithms, uh, it controls that environment a little bit better. Do you see that this is? Uh, a wave of the future for better food, uh, reduced uh, genetically modified organisms or GMOs, as most people know them, for uh, replenishing all of the, you know, the minerals and the nutrients that uh, we used to get in our food by by going through these processes. It's a great question, and it's one that's pertinent to a large part of our customer base. We have two. Specifically, we have two different lamps. We've got a research model and a commercial model. So we have a number of researchers looking at the, the genetic code, the genetic instructions that are inside the plant and saying, what is the light that that genetic instruction asks for? Right now, with a static lamp, you're not providing the sun-up, sun-down daily routine that the plant has over millions of years um, evolved into uh, needing, right? So you take this seed and then all of a sudden you put it inside this completely static lamp, uh, excuse me, static light uh, scenario where you're simply turning the, the light on and off. Um, you're not providing the plant with the, with the light instructions that are in the genetic, genetic code. Um, so the, the, it, it's all, it, the, the code is already in the seed, <laughs> it's already there. It's telling us what it wants. We simply have to listen to what the what the what the plant is asking for, and by using our biofeedback, we're able to deliver what we call a light recipe, and that is the the the, the light that is most healthy for the the plant. And in the end, you get a a healthy plant that you didn't have to overwater. Uh, super dose with with nutrients or grow in some genetically modified way that that maybe the instructions are you know where there's a, a contrary instruction in the, in the genetic code are, so we, we have clients that are specifically looking at this very large ag play clients that all of your viewers have heard of that are specifically using our lamp to look at this at this question so uh, I'm, I'm wondering if if, if it's mature economies that really are going to be the customer base here for your company, for Heliospectra, or would it would they be able to, to move this to, say, third world, un, underdeveloped countries and actually improve the product coming from that? Because that's where we get a lot of our food from, these third world countries. They go out and they buy these huge plots of land and then they ship it over. But it comes with a lot of additives we really don't want in our system. It's it's a really interesting time for ag in that uh, with this with the cannabis economy specifically, you have this new revenue stream. And what we see a lot of our clients doing is saying, okay, well, we grow all these plants and vegetables, uh, fruits and vegetables that have this extremely low revenue associated with the with the sale. But yet there's this other new plant that we can grow, and we already know how to grow plants. We already we already have the operation in place. Why would we not switch part of our operation to cannabis and then take that revenue and reinvest in these lower revenue uh, uh, models? Bananas are, are, are you know, probably the, the world's greatest example of this. Um, Chris, I, I yep. need to interrupt you. I just didn't have enough time to get all of my questions in, but I, we've got to close for today. But I want to thank you so much for being a part of our show. 
it's, it's been fascinating. Thanks, thanks again, Michael. Thank you. Chris Walker, GM Helio Spectra, symbol on the OTC HLSPY and on Sweden's NASDAQ HELIO, heliospectra.com. Thank you for joining the show.